today we have a little chat about Sleeping Beauty. Um, actually, this is the 50th anniversary edition. That's probably quite a long time ago now, but um, watched it last night. It's been a while since I've watched it. Um, I have a 4K TV and a 4K player. Looks fantastic. The animation and the colour in it, uh, the fight scene at the end with Maleficent, I hope you've seen it, is breathtaking to look at. Um, it's kind of weird because I've, I've seen this for years and originally um, it was pan and scanned and chopped down into little bits. Um, there was a, a clip of it once shown in a TV thing we used to have over here called um, Disney Time. And they used to bank holidays, Christmas, Easter, things like that. They used to show clips from Disney films intercut with a celebrity. Uh, so you'd have... Uh, the one I remember as a kid was Tom Baker. Uh, as Doctor Who and he was in between in little clips in between um, I think he was messing about in a castle I seem to remember I think you can find it on YouTube if you put in Disney time that's the only one where there's bits of it exist uh, anyway and it was the, there's a scene with the Flora Fauna and Merriweather trying to do the cake for her birthday and the dress and it was just that bit, and it will always have that, will always have a special place in my memory because of that. Um, but it was pan scanned and squidged down. And this was made in Super Technorama 70mm widescreen. So it was made big. Um, this and Lady and the Tramp were the only sort of two anamorphic films, or well, the first two anamorphic films that Disney did. Um, and it deserved it because the, the the way it's animated, the backdrops, the backing, and it's made to look like a tapestry. Everything's very straight lines or circular, and it is it is beautiful to look at. This I would say that this is the film if you've never seen a Disney film and you want to sort of see how great animation can be. This is the one, and I don't think they've ever animated anything else as good as this I think this is the one that is what Disney can do um, and I think it's a shame modern animation even nowadays with with CG you know with the computer generated sort of characters and that um, I mean Moana is is brilliant but doesn't I don't know doesn't have the same magic that this has to think that people sat with pen and ink and paint and drew every single cell and they were put through, you know, the, the technique that was used to make this is, is breathtaking. Uh, and that was a problem. It cost six million to make, which back then was a, a, a lot of money. And only made about four point something million back. Um, yeah, the studio, the studio made a loss that year. And they'd made a loss up until then pretty much anyway. That's why Walt decided to go back and make another fairy tale. Um, they'd sort of strayed away from them. Dumbo, Pinocchio, I suppose, isn't really a fairy tale as such. Um, the last one, Peter Pan, Lady and Tramp. Lady and Tramp was the last one that they'd done. That hadn't done very well. Which is strange, because now these are all the films that we all think of Disney. We think of Sleeping Beauty, Lady and the Tramp, Dumbo, etc. But they didn't do very... Some didn't do very well in the day. Um, but yeah... <clears throat> They went back, they said, let's go back to the, the fairy tale stuff. And they, they looked at it, but a little bit too close to a similarity to Snow White. So they, they juggled it around a little bit. And yeah, I mean, I think this, this if you were to say, is there a similarity? Yes, because it has the, the evil, it's the evil queen in Snow White. In this, it has Maleficent, who is one of the best villains that Disney ever created. Um... They went with very angular characters because of the doing it in the widescreen and doing it like the tapestry thing. A lot of people in tapestries are very thin, you know, um, so everything's a little stretched. And Maleficent is, oh, she's just brilliant. And I think one of the best villains and also shares the shares the voice with and I cannot remember the actresses. So I'm really sorry, but she shares the voice with um, Madame Liotta from the Haunted Mansion. Same person did the voice for that. Um, 
Mary Costa, she did the voice for uh, Sleeping Beauty, Aurora, or... I can't remember what her other name is. Anyway, Aurora. We'll call her Aurora. Um, Briar Rose. Yes, Briar Rose. There we go. Briar Rose. Um, and she, she, she does the singing. She also had a southern accent, so she had to pretend not to have a southern accent. Um, it's got Prince Philip, who was the first... Who was named after the Queen's husband, the English Queen's husband, because um, they were in the news at the time. They were quite popular, so they went with Prince Philip. Um, he is the first prince to have a name. The first one was uh, the Prince in Snow White, and then Prince Charming in um, Adam and the Ants. Anyway, um, he was the next one. Uh, Prince Charming in Cinderella. And yeah, Prince Eric. It's kind of weird though, I was watching it last night, I'd never really noticed, but Prince Eric and Aurora don't speak f for a lot of the film. It's really weird. They, towards the end, I hope you've seen this, but towards the end, when the, he's escaping from Maleficent's castle and trying to rescue... Aurora, um, he doesn't speak again. The, the fairies do, but he doesn't. Um, yeah, and it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of weird that, that even at the end, everybody's looking and they just, and they just dance together and that's it. Um, so yeah, this was, funny enough, this was the last film to do, to have a princess in it until Little Mermaid in 1989. And I I will always stand up and say this is the best animation that Disney ever did. Um, it got she got a castle in Disneyland. It was originally going to be Snow White's, but it became hers because we were building it at the time. And she also got one in Euro Disney as well. And the Euro Disney one's cool because the trees around the edge of it are done in little squares to look like um, the trees in the film. So yeah, I would say go out, get this, try and get like a Blu-ray or a DVD. If you get it, make sure that you're getting it in the biggest format you can because you really need to see the whole picture, the whole thing, because it is just beautiful. And I say 16th film they made and fantastic. I'm going to do some more of these if you enjoy them and I'm sure I'll get better at them. <laughs> um... So if you like this and you want me to do more of them, like, subscribe, thumbs up, etc, etc. Uh, sorry if I'm a little ranty, but that's how I am. And I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you all again really soon.